Trust in the Lord with all your heart, all your heart, all your heart, trust in the Lord, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. In all your ways, everything you do, acknowledge him. He will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. You need health today? You need nourishment to your bones today? Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, shun evil, and acknowledge him in all your ways. This is a form of a worship. This is a, we were talking earlier, and we are in book of Daniel, we, are to, we were talking about form of worship. Acknowledging God in all your ways is a form of worship. You are washing dishes, you're acknowledging God. You're eating, you acknowledge God. You're going to sleep, you acknowledge God. Especially, I want to tell you, a lot of people write to me and they have nightmares and I say, before you go to bed, out loud, acknowledge God and you will have no nightmares. Declare him King of kings and Lord of lords. Read Psalm 23, read Lord's prayer, Psalm 27. Start opening your mouth. Before you go to sleep, you will have no nightmares. You, because the enemy will be tormented in the presence of someone who is a true worshiper and who prays God all the time. He cannot stand it. You know, I do deliverance ministry time to time and people come with demon possession or demonization, de demonic oppression, and the moment I start declaring, Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, after a while they start closing their ears and they start screaming, I can't take it, I, and it's a good thing. This means the enemy is being tormented and he's going to leave because he cannot stand when there's, there's a true worshiper. He cannot stand in your presence. And it is huge. So acknowledging him in all your ways is a form of worship. You have a school exam, acknowledge him. You are working, acknowledge him. I acknowledge you, Lord. Like today, before I came here, I said, Lord, I acknowledge you. I cannot do the, these programs without you. I cannot speak without you. I'm not a eloquent speaker. I, Lord, I need you. I need you. I need your anointing. What is good that I am an eloquent speaker and if I don't have anointing? I need anointing to break the yoke of the bondage. Lord, I need, this is acknowledging. After here, we are going to drive out of town. I need you, Lord. I need your traveling mercy. This is acknowledging God in all your ways. Telling him, I, I can do all things through you, but apart from you, I can do nothing. This worship. It's not only lifting up your hands and everything. It's good. But form of worship is what you declare and profess with your mouth, and it lines up, it's parallel to what your attitude and your behavior. Now we are in Daniel 3. We are seeing this at work. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide and set it up on a plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the straps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all of the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. We talk about this, this egocentric, egotistical guy. And he put this huge, uh, this morning my, uh, my husband and I were studying this. And we check it out, it is 90 feet. It's, it, is, it is like how many story of a building. It's huge. It's a high building, imagine in New York City, and he puts a that big of a statue. And he said, you are going to worship this image. Everybody, when they hear the music, they are going to fall down, prostrate, and worship this image. This, hap this is happening right now in North Korea. In, in the, you know, all these communist countries, they worship the government, they worship the man, they worship their president, their pictures are everywhere, their flags are everywhere. Before, even in the Islam, you saw the statue of Saddam everywhere. It was everywhere. They put it every single place, the sculptures and everything. They worship man. They worship Muhammad. They worship dead God, Allah, moon God. 
They worship Buddha. People need an idol in their lives to worship. First of all, King Nebuchadnezzar is not a stupid guy. We told you before, he's a powerful military king. We see it in the Bible, godly military kings. Joshua was a military leader. He was not a king, but he was a military leader. And then David was a military leader. He was brilliant, brilliant, and with the power of God. So you see military pers personalities, and King Nebuchadnezzar is a perfect example of a pagan, powerful, military warrior king. So when he says, whatever he says goes. And he puts this big statue, it is humongous and it is glorious because he made it with gold. And people are worshiping. So he's a super spiritual guy, super spiritual man. It's very important that we understand everybody is worshiping this statue except three people, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We are, not, uh, we are not reading Daniel here. They were always together, and Daniel must be maybe in another province or another place for another duty, but he's not in this chapter. So these three guys, they say, we are not going to bow down before that idol. We are not going to. We don't care. The whole the world bow down to that idol. We are not going to bow down to it. It doesn't impress us. It doesn't move us. It is a dead God. It is not our God. And we don't yield to that. Even it means that we may lose our lives. I know a man. I know him, our ministry is certain ways involved and we receive a testimony before about his salvation and his 15 year old son received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And a few days later, ISIS came into their town and went into their house and told the father to deny his faith. He, he didn't deny, he, they said, we are going to cut your son in half. Unless you worship our God, Allah, and you say the Shahada. This man said no. And they cut his son in half. And he didn't, he didn't bash God. He didn't get angry at God. You know what he did? God give it, he take it. Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I will depart. And I worship my God. Be glory to God. How many people can do that in the house of God today? What our brothers and sisters are going through and not denying their faith. That's unshakable faith. Do you think that he didn't suffer? He didn't grieve and his son's crying and weeping, screaming image was not in his eyes and in his mind. Maybe he was, he was do you think that he was not traumatized? Do you think he, he's not a human being or he was on medication that he wouldn't get it? No, no medication can take an image of your baby is being cut in half in front of your eyes because you don't deny your fate. You don't deny your faith. You don't deny your God. This is the type of people that we are seeing in Daniel chapter 3. They say, we don't care about our lives. We don't care. But before we go there, all these people start going to King Nebuchadnezzar. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, may the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree, decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, music, all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of God. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into bla a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the, over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you. Your majesty, they neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. They don't. You see, persecution. When you worship the living redeemer, 
the only creator, you will be persecuted. Our brothers and sisters are being persecuted in the Muslim world. But let me tell you, persecution comes in different shapes and forms in the Western world too. You are being persecuted many times with the spirit of antichrist. Even in the church, even in the, under the so-called people that are, call themselves believers, there's an antichrist spirit that persecutes you, torments you, unless you're aware of what it is and you can bind it and you can lose it according to Matthew 16, 19. And in many places it says bind, bind, bind and lose God's power. We have to be so vigilant and sober of what kind of spirit is operating in the atmosphere where we enter, where we enter in. And many people don't know. And this is why sometimes you say, I don't know why I feel the way, the way I am feeling this morning. I don't know what's, what's, what's wrong with me. I don't know. I don't know today. I don't have joy. You are like a zombie. You are walking like numb. And you don't understand. Or you feel super pressured. Super irritable. And you don't understand why. Let me tell you, you are under warfare. You are going through warfare. And it's a persecution of the spirit of the prince of air. Whether through someone carrying a spirit of witchcraft or, or Jezebel, all kinds of spirits, okay? That is persecuting you. And you are not aware of that. But once you are aware of that, you know your enemy, you know how to fight against it. How? With the word of God. So these people are slandering them. Oh, they don't worship. They are different than us. They worship a different God than us. Do you think it's not happening today? The country is divided. Don't you see what's happening around us? This is what is happening. They are. Those people are. Those Christians are. Those believers are. They think they know the truth. They are so rigid. They are so, they are be, be wearing horse blinds. What about you? You are persecuting me. There's, you are committing a hate crime towards me or my beliefs. No, that's persecution. And they are talking to the king. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he told them, if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? What God? He's going to see what God. <laughs> He's going to see. Don't you like it? When people dare God, <laughs> enemies of God, dare him. They say things about him in the world. You know, even my father used to say, before his salvation, my former Muslim father gave his life to one of my preachings. He threw himself to the altar and wept. You know, he's not all, still all together, but God cleaned him up a lot, let me tell you. But he used to, I, he used to tell me, I am I'm so this, I'm going through this, and I, I will say, I will be praying for you, Dad. And he's like, oh, if our business is depending on prayer, we are in a bad shape. This is what my father used to say. <laughs> but now, after three strokes, that brilliant economist, brilliant biz businessman was humbled, and learn that everything in life is not in his control anymore. He is so close to death that no one can rescue him other than God. And now he calls and he says, can you pray for me to Jesus? You see, don't you like when people dare in their best time of their lives, when they are young, they are powerful, they, have, they are making big monies, big positions, careers and everything, it's easy. They feel like everything is under their control. Once you pull the rock, once God shows something to them, what happens to them? What happens to that ego? What happens to that arrogance? I heard a professional basketball player who was known with his arrogance and his pride. He was making millions of dollars. He was on TV for advertisement, this and that. And he wouldn't even talk to people. He wouldn't even talk to people at restaurants or at the, in service business. He wouldn't like, excuse me, you're talking to me? He had that kind of attitude. He could get any girls he wanted, any girl or girls. 
He was top on his game. He was top on the mountain. And he started talking arrogantly about his talent until he got a big accident and he got disabled. When they interviewed him, I saw his interview years ago, he said, that accident was the best thing ever happened to me. I learned so much from that trial that, that what kind of a jerk I was, excuse me, but he said that. God humbled me, he said. Sometimes you go through the fire, you walk through the waters, and you feel like drowning and burning, but actually God is refining you. God is working things with you because he loves you. Your enemy of that trial that you think has God's power in your life. And you will be better at the end than at the beginning. So this guy says, they reply, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even he does not. Don't you love that? Their love and devotion, their worship is not depending on what God can perform for them. Wow. This is huge. They didn't say only that our God will deliver us. He didn't, they didn't say that. Even he does not. We will trust his sovereignty. I trust him. If he doesn't, absence from the body is presence with the Lord. Either way, I am in a good place. If he delivers me, praise to be the Lord. If he doesn't deliver me, I will be with him. This is an unshakable faith. Either way, it's going to work for my benefit because I am faithful. And I worship true God. Wow, this is true faith. It's not depending on circumstances. It's not depending on storms and winds and hurricanes. Don't you want to be like that? I want to be like that. I, I, I am not saying that I don't have an unshakable fear, but I am saying that I never be thrown into a burning furnace, blazing furnace. I haven't. I don't know. We can talk. It's talking one thing and walking the walk is another thing. But I, it felt like I walked through the fire in my life many times. Maybe you've been through that too. You feel like you can't take any more. You can, your heart is turning into a wax within you and melting. Things are just falling apart and you cannot control, you cannot do anything. You are ready to give up. You are ready to surrender to the enemy. Not in a way to worship him and say, okay, you win, I lost. You are about to say, God turned his hand against me. He's not there for me. He doesn't talk to me. He doesn't care for me. Or you are ready to say, because I have done this, I have done that, I, this is a punishment. You, you are going into a blame game or you are blaming others. So it, it comes, trial comes with a lot of turmoil. And it is not only uh, in, the, in the trial. It is in your mind, it's in your emotions. Do you think somebody goes to, through a cancer, chemotherapy? Do they only go physically? It's only a physical thing if somebody has cancer? No. They have to deal with it emotionally. They have to deal with it spiritually. Why did this happen to me? What did I do wrong? What is the reason of this? What can I learn? It's all, your mind is so open to all kinds of thinking and torment. It's not only physical, it's spiritual, it is emotional. This is why sometimes people say, oh, deliverance is only spiritual, you know, it can be spiritual, but it can be physical. Everything is spiritual. How you react to things, how you handle things, how you go to God, how you do marriage, how you do your intimacy, sexual intimacy in bed. Everything is spiritual. Because you're going to eat, you're going to treat the other person next to you, you're going to look at them better than yourselves. It is all spiritual. How you deal with your cancer, how you give praise to God in the midst of chemotherapy when you are throwing up, when you are losing your hair. It's spiritual. 
It is spiritual, walking through the fire. So there are so many different ways of fire, but you need to understand, this is a literal fire. That I love it, because people, some people always say that, oh, this is a figurative speech here. This is a figure. These are the people that they don't believe in miracles. They don't believe the supernatural. And they are believers. They call themselves believers. By the, but book of Daniel is such a stretch for them because this is a real fire. This is a literal fire. La, den of lions is a literal den of lions. It's not like your enemy. It's not the people in your life that they want to destroy you or hurt you. This is real lions. <laughs> it's amazing. God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even he does not. We want you to know your majesty. That we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious. Who wants to see a pagan, aggressive, cruel, egocentric king, warrior king, furious. I remember when my father used to be furious. I was like... I wanted to hide. When my father wa was yelling and screaming and slamming the doors and breaking things, I, I didn't want to be around. Imagine this guy. And he ordered, his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent, and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You see? Don't play with fire. Don't be around fire. You will be burned too. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace furnace. This is a real fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fort looks like a son of God's. <laughs> He just misspelled at the end. Son of God, <laughs> not son of God. But he got an idea. Remember, he's a super spiritual human being. Son of God, he said. Very close. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, <laughs> come out, come here. He's already declaring that he is the only most high God. But he's not saved yet until the next chapter. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire and straps, satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. So all these people, they slandered them. They were like, these guys, they don't need to say anything. You see, we always preach. We always preach at people, preach to unbelievers. I worship God. I worship my God is this. No, these guys, they don't have to say anything. You see, we forget the power of God. We forget the supernatural power of God in our lives. Because you can preach the word of God. You can glorify God in three ways. And the word is the only one part of it. Signs and wonders and your deeds. And the other one with words. But we fail in this. We only speak with words, but we don't speak, we don't speak to people with signs and wonders and with our good deeds. This is, these are the parts that we need to get into. We, need, we want to see God's power at work. It's all about talk, talk, talk. Paul said, kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but power. Show me your power in Christ, then I will listen to your message. That's huge. So these guys 
just come out and everybody is looking at them. Wow. 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 They don't need to say anything rest of their lives. They're going to walk in that royal court and everybody will know that these are the guys that they will not burn in the blazing furnace. They said this is their testimony rest of their lives. Everybody will know. Your testimony is your ministry. Your story is your ministry. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble for no other God can save this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Wow. The miracle and sign of the supernatural move of the true God brought promotion. This is what happens. God's presence in your life brings you promotion because it brings favor. It brings favor. Maybe today you are walking through the fire and this is word of God for you. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, Isaiah 43, 2. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. You will not be burned if you worship me. Hallelujah. 